Hello guys, Gameboy Hub here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at another obscure piece of software. Now, a while ago now I made a short about connecting the North Korean operating system, also known as Red Star OS, to the internet. And you guys really seem to like that short, and all of that was done in a virtual machine of course, but today I had a thought, could that OS actually be installed on real hardware? Now I did try that quite a long time ago and I tried it on my MacBook, if you guys don't know I have a polycarbonate 2009 MacBook, and on there it just wouldn't boot into the installer, so I just thought that it might have been impossible. But then I looked around more and a lot of people seem to have got it working on real hardware. So I thought, why not try that today? So now I have a lot more machines on hand that we can try. I've got about seven or eight PCs that we can try this on. And the first one is going to be this HP laptop. Now, if you're not familiar with it, I recently did a video on a few free laptops that I got, and that will be in the iCard right now. And this was one of the laptops in the video. It has an Intel Core 2 Duo processor and a gigabyte of RAM. So it's nothing special, but it should be plenty for Red Star OS. And this computer originally came with Windows Vista Basic on it, so you can imagine how slow it must have been in the first place. This is also the original installation of XP that I got this with, so the owner probably got this with Vista and downgraded to XP, which is what most people did. But yeah, we're gonna try this on here because the Core 2 Duo series is pretty flexible with the OS's it can run. There is a very wide spec of OS's that came out in that time, so I'm hoping that it might work with Red Star OS. Red Star OS is based on Linux, I think, and I think it is based on Red Hat originally. So yeah, it should work on a Core 2 Duo, but we'll see. So I burnt the ISO image to a DVD-R, as you can see right over here. We're gonna be trying to install version 3.0, which is the latest version that we have. So yeah, first we'll try this HP, and if it doesn't work, we'll move on to another machine. So let's just slot the DVD into the optical drive. And now I'm just going to restart the computer. And I believe we have to hold F9 for the boot menu. Yep, that's correct. Okay, this seems to be a pretty, pretty simple menu. So let's select optical disk drive and press enter. And let's see if it boots. Okay, the screen has gone black and the optical drive is spinning up. So let's cross fingers and hope it boots into the installer. And oh my god, it actually works. We got the logo. And I won't get too happy until we actually boot into the installer, but this is the first time I've seen the logo on original hardware, so... Okay, it has gone dark again, so please boot. Oh, we have a blue screen. Yes, we are in the installer. How cool is that? Okay. And this does seem to be the English patch, as we can see by the buttons, which is very good. Wow, we are actually in the installer, and this looks so funky on just a regular laptop like this. Because this OS has a macOS 10 aesthetic, as you can see, it is really similar to macOS 10. It just looks so funky on a regular Windows laptop like this. Okay, so let's press next. The mouse driver also seems to have loaded, as you can see, because we have mouse. And we get the little rainbow loop, as we do on macOS X. Okay, and it does actually recognize the hard drives, which is pretty cool, and it even adds a little Windows XP logo on the hard drive. Yeah, this software actually seems to be quite user-friendly. Maybe they do have some locked version of XP in North Korea, that is how they made this. But this was probably made by some kind of higher up, so they probably knew about Windows XP. Let me also adjust the screen a little bit so you guys can see better. Okay, so we're gonna try to go into Disk Utility to see how it looks. Uh, and here we can actually format the hard drive, which is what I will do. So let's hope that we can format it right here. Oh, it has an HP recovery partition. So let's just delete that. Okay, now I have free space and let's also delete this partition. So we'll just repartition the hard drive. So now both of them are free. 
Okay, so let's just make a new partition now. I have no idea how to connect this over here. I don't know. I don't know why I'm even messing around with this. We don't need that much space at all for this OS. Okay, so I just won't mess around with the partitions. We'll just install it on the bigger one right here. So I'm not sure which one I need to format it to, but I'm guessing it's ext3. I've never heard of this file system before, but we'll just try to format it to that and see if it installs. We can also call this red star OS like that. And we can click apply and yes. And there we go. Now we have the partition right over here and ready. So let's click on the red star OS partition that we just created and click next. That's fine. You can format the hard drive. Okay, for the username, we're gonna put in Game Boy Hub like so for the short name. G hub like that. I'm not going to put in a password and click next. Okay. So this is the network setup, but we will do this later on, not now. So I'll just go for next and look at that. You can actually choose a place other than DPR Korea, even though it is pretty cool that you can choose Pyongyang. Also, I love it how they're in the center of the map. I heard USA also does this where they put the US in the center of the map and then all the other countries are around it. But I'll actually try to select where I'm from. So we've got Budapest. Okay, we do have Belgrade. There you go. It still says uh, Serbia and Montenegro, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we're gonna select Croatia like that and click next. Okay, today's date, it is the 24th of February and the year is 2025. There we go. And the time is 1421 like that. So we can go apply and then we can click next. And now we're about to install the operating system. So we can click the install button and just wait for this to install. And I can't actually believe that it worked the first time. I mean, we still haven't installed it, but it looks like it's gonna work. So yeah, I'll just put in a little time lapse right now of this installing and I'll be back when it's hopefully installed. Here we are in Red Star OS. So that installation took about 30 minutes, which isn't too bad considering this laptop does only have a mechanical hard drive. After it was done, the CD just popped out by itself and the computer restarted. And now we're booted into the operating system. So yeah, it seems that this actually isn't the English version, which will make things a little bit harder. I don't know if we can install that patch later on, but it would be cool if we can. But yeah, the OS has been successfully installed on actual hardware, which is pretty cool. It recognizes the CPU as it is, and it also recognizes the RAM. I don't know what's up with this computer and the weird RAM numbers it's giving out, but in Windows XP, it read 1.02 gigabytes and here it reads 993 megabytes. Yeah, that is pretty weird, but everything works as it should. So now first I'll see what I can do about changing the language to English, and then we'll actually try to connect this to the internet. So first I'll try over Wi-Fi. I don't even know if it has that capability, but later I'll try over ethernet if that doesn't work. And then we'll hopefully do some web browsing on a North Korean operating system on actual hardware. So in order to change the language to English, we don't actually need to install any patches. It is actually built into the OS. So first we'll need to find the terminal app and actually enable root. So let's do that right now. And here is the terminal app. So let's enter it. So in order to enable root, we need to type in slash user slash s bin slash root setting like that and click enter. And now we need to unlock this little padlock over here with our password. We don't have a password, so we'll just continue. Enable root, just click this button. And after we have root checked, we can close the lock. 
and exit out of all of this. And now we have root enabled. And now we will need to log out of our user. And now this other user appears. So this is the root account. So we'll need to log into that account. So the username is root and we can leave the other thing blank because we'll put no password in. And now we will log in as administrator. So now we need to go back into terminal. And you can see that we did everything correctly because it now says root at GHub PC. So now we need to type in a few commands. So the first one is this one. So this is the first command that we need to type in and then press enter. And the next one is this one right over here. And this right over here is the second command that we need to type in. So the first part is the same as before and the second part is a bit changed. So just press enter. And now we can just reboot the system and our OS should be in English. And there we go. That worked flawlessly and everything is in English now. So now it will be a lot easier to use this OS. So yeah, that is how you change the language. Now let's try connecting this to the internet. So I just checked off camera and this OS isn't actually capable of having a Wi-Fi connection. So we're gonna be using ethernet. Now I already plugged in an ethernet cable into the back of this laptop off camera. So now I'll show you how to connect this software to the internet. Now, if you go into system preferences and then network, you can see that ethernet is actually inactive. So we'll need to activate that. So we'll go for using DHCP and click apply. And now it should all activate. Okay, so it didn't wanna connect when I edited that network, but then I just removed it right over here with this minus and added another ethernet connection, which I set to automatic and using DHCP immediately. And then it just found everything. So yeah, now we're connected to the internet, which is pretty cool. So now if we exit this and if I refresh this and yeah, now it tries to connect to something as you can see, but it won't connect to anything because it's trying to connect to the North Korean intranet right now. And yeah, as I heard, they have a few of their own websites. I think it's like 30 or 40 or something. Their airlines has their own website. And I believe some other companies in North Korea also have their own website. And the government has their own website, of course. But yeah, now I'm basically gonna show you how to convert this browser so you can access actual Google. So yeah, what we're gonna need for that is once again, terminal. So let's just go into it. I'll also adjust the screen so you guys can see a bit better. So the first thing we'll need to do is remove the built-in IP tables. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So this is the first command that you'll need to type in. So after that, just hit enter. And then we'll need to restart the IP tables. And that is a very simple command. And this is the one that we need to type in. So just hit enter and you should get three prompts like this that say, okay. And now you are pretty much done and we can exit out of terminal. And after we type those commands in, our browser should work as a regular browser. So let's see if it does. And it once again opens these two web pages so we can close out of those. Just open a new one. Let's go to google.com. And there we go, we have Google on the North Korean OS, which looks pretty funky if you ask me. So let's full screen this. So yeah, let's try to do a little bit of web browsing. I don't think YouTube is going to work, but we'll try it, whoops. Okay, the web page does actually load, but let's see. Yeah, we get this error right over here. So the Nainara browser is based on an early version of Mozilla Firefox. So I'm not sure which version exactly that is, but yeah, it just can't seem to load YouTube. Oh, wait, I was just messing around with the buttons there and something is loading. I don't think it will load in full because I think it would have already, but we got further, we can see the logo up there. Wow, this looks so janky. Yeah, I don't think the web page will actually work because the browser is too old, but we did need to apply some things in order for this to even try to load. So yeah, now we know. Let's try a more simple website like Reddit. So we'll click on it. And this one gives us a different error and it just brings us back to YouTube for some reason. Yeah, so this one won't even let us allow anything to even try to let us in. This one just kicks us out immediately. I know a website that will work, so let's launch that. Macintosh repository is known to work on all kinds of different old web browsers, so let's try to launch it. 
And no, it actually gives us the same error as Reddit, which is quite interesting. Uh, I don't even know, maybe we, have an, maybe we have a connection error. No, we don't, the ethernet is absolutely fine. Wow, so Macintosh repository doesn't even work. That is pretty rare. Twitter also doesn't seem to work, which is pretty expected. Let's see if Gmail works, that should work, right? Okay, it does let us allow some stuff. Whoa, what is that? Okay, I have no idea what it says here. It says error expired issuer certificate. Okay, that's pretty weird. Okay, but is this an actual Gmail login or what? It is, it does let us type in an email address, but it's all kind of messed up and non-working, which is a shame. Let's see if minecraft.net will work. Okay, it also gives us this prompt. So let's allow it once again. It tries so hard to load it, everything spins up. Oh, we did get the Creeper logo up there, but this is all we get from the website, unfortunately. So I searched around for some classic websites. So let's try retroarchive.org. Here it is. So let's see if that website will launch. Ooh, and here it is. This is the first one that actually resembles the real version. The characters once again are all messed up, but this is the first website that did actually load. Yeah, all of these characters should be letters, but they just aren't. So let's see if we click on something else. And after clicking on that MS-DOS prompt, this one actually works absolutely fine. You can see all of the text and stuff. So I guess this is the first website that kind of works. Yeah, and we can even download some of these files. So let's try just downloading a file. Ooh, and it gives the same prompt as Mac OS. That's pretty cool. So let's keep it. <laughs> what is that little prompt? And there we go. It downloads the file absolutely fine. Linux unfortunately can't open .exe files, so we can't try to install this app. And also, if you're curious about installing apps on this OS, I haven't been able to find any that work, but there is an application right here. I'll see if I can find it. I don't know, I'll try to find it online. I can't find it here. I know there is like an x86 launcher, so you are able to install some kind of applications. I don't know if that app even allows you to install exe files, that might be possible. But yeah, I know you can install some stuff, but I'm pretty sure you can't install another web browser. So yeah, unfortunately, we're stuck with Nainara. Okay, let's see if we can at least change the wallpaper. That should be possible, right? So let's go to Google and let me think about what wallpaper I want. Perfect. I don't know which one of these is the download button. Okay, so I was just clicking random options and this one actually seems to set it as the wallpaper immediately. I'll see if it actually does. Oh, we can have the tiled. Oh yeah, I'll go for the tiled, definitely. Hey, hey, hey. now this is what I'm talking about right here. Okay, so now that we learned to set the wallpaper, let's try that again. Now this might be even better. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a certain someone would have a heart attack if he saw this. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We didn't really accomplish anything with browsing the web on here because none of the web pages pretty much work. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should do or even some tips on how to maybe fix this, even though I'm pretty sure you can't, I googled around everywhere, you guys can leave that in the comments. But I guess it is pretty cool to see this running on regular hardware, which is what I've never seen before. And it is even cooler that you can even connect it to the internet. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Also, please check out my Twitter and Instagram and don't report me to North Korean spies. And I'll see you guys in the next video.